Big news in the adventure bike rally market for those of you like myself that have more money than cents, Ducati brought to market a rally version of the Desert X. Now this is right on the heels of KTM announcing that they're bringing back the 890 rally edition, uh, which I wasn't super happy about because as an owner of a 2021 KTM rally that's really my resale value so uh thanks for that one ktm but what i did think would be fun would be to just compare and contrast based on what i'm seeing on the internet so let's just kind of start with the suspension i think oftentimes when people look at the price of these bikes the suspension is, is probably the first thing that's a little bit misunderstood with the uh with the ktm it is just the creme de la creme it's a pro component suspension front and rear you have all the adjustability in the world um, and then when you're looking at the desert x rally it's a kyb suspension they've increased travel they've increased um, from what i can tell a little bit of the adjustability but the ktm suspension from what i can tell still has a bit more adjustability to it uh, you can do preload on, on the front you get high and low speed compression damping on the rear from what i've read about the desert x um, there's no preload adjustment on the front and uh, it's just regular compression damping on the rear. I don't think they split the circuit into high and low speed. So it seems like the KTM suspension is still going to get the win over uh, the Desert X. And I actually, I built out this really cool little spreadsheet. So you can see this is my, this is my cheat sheet um, for, for how this is all coming to me. I actually spent some time going back and forth on this. Now, what I will say from a suspension standpoint, um, the KTM gets more travel as well. Where I will... Uh, give the Desert X kudos is it seems like from what I read the Desert X rally will come with an Olean's steering damper and the KTM comes with just a piece of shit steering damper uh, which most people replace and put a Scott's damper on there so all of that suspension travel does have an effect on the seat height the KTM's seat height is 37 whopping inches tall I will say neither I'm sorry, I got talking to the microphone. I will say that neither of these bikes uh, really is ideal for people with, uh, let's call them inseam challenged folks because the Desert X Rally seat height is 35.8 inches. So if you're trying to figure out which one is more uh, amenable to you shorter folk, it would be the Ducati by about an inch. Um, but personally, as someone that stands a commanding six feet, three inches tall, I actually really like the seat on the KTM. I feel comfortable on it. And I know that short people talk about the fact that they're you know, prohibited, but there's a lot of bikes that I ride that I feel cramped up on. So it's nice to have a really big, tall bike that tall people enjoy. Brakes, let's just get right into it. KTM uses KTM brakes. One of my biggest complaints going from the, the 1090 to the 890 was the brakes aren't as good. Um, the clutch isn't as good. And when you're comparing to the Desert X Rally, uh, the Desert X has Brembo M50 monoblock calipers up front. They're just, oh, if I could, mwah. I don't know if you can hear that in the microphone, but I'm doing the, mwah, the little Italian kissy thing because I made good pasta. Uh, so Desert X, better brakes than the KTM. I can pretty much damn near guarantee it. Engines are going to be pretty close in comparison here. The engines aren't changed, whether you're looking at the base model or the rally edition for either of these bikes. KTM gets an 889 parallel twin, makes about 105 claimed horsepower, about 74 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, the Ducati is a 937cc uh, V-twin, makes about 110 claimed horsepower, about 68 foot-pounds of torque. So if you're splitting hairs, Ducati, more horsepower, less torque. KTM, less horsepower, more torque. But it's it's apples to apples here, folks. The one thing that I will say is from a characteristic standpoint, the uh, the Ducati, I think, is a little bit more friendly at lower RPM, but I could be misremembering that. It's been a long time in my memory. It's, it's not what it used to be, you know, in my younger years. Uh, the wheels on this, I was actually surprised. So uh, Ducati kind of took a play out of KTM's playbook. Um, they're both using Excel rims. Uh, and they're dirt-specific rims. So that means that you have to use tubes with these motorcycles. Uh, I believe my bike from 2021 had DID rims on it, but it's really cool. So the idea here is they're more off-road capable. They're less susceptible to bends and brakes. I know with my 1090, the rims bent like butter, um, whereas my 890 rims are much more durable uh, for use out on the trail. So they're both going to be pretty well stacked from a rim standpoint, but you do need to know that if you're looking at either of these motorcycles, um, you have to use tubes, and, and that's, a, that's an off-road focused thing. Fuel tank, 
5.3 gallons on the KTM, 5.5-ish gallons on the Desert X. So again, really, really close there. If you're trying to figure out how that translates, I typically get over 200 miles a tank uh, on the KTM. It's actually quite fuel efficient. Um, I find that I'm getting, you know, about 45 to 48 miles per gallon, uh, even when I'm romping on it. So I, I've been pretty stoked with what I'm seeing from a fuel performance standpoint, um, and both are going to carry about the same amount of fuel. I don't know what the Ducati Desert X fuel range specs are off the top of my head. Maybe somebody throws in the comment section below and you know how many miles and how many MPGs you're getting on your Desert X. Here's the final kicker here is the weight. I have thrown my bike on a scale with a full tank of gas. Zach has done this for a Daily Rider episode that he shot with my bike. 476 pounds wet. I would imagine there might be some fluctuation with the, uh, with the new 2024 version. But when you're looking at what Ducati is claiming with the Desert X, they're claiming two kilograms, which is like 2.2 pounds heavier than the stock Desert X. Um, and if you're looking at dry weight, that's somewhere around 448 pounds, give or take. When you factor in 5.3 gallons of gas, I don't know if they're factoring in the weight of tubes and using tubes and wheels or the oil. I'm guessing the Desert X is going to be close. The rally version is going to be close to 500 pounds. Um, so I'm assuming if, if the, the numbers that I'm researching are correct, the, the KTM rally will be somewhere around 20 pounds lighter uh, than, the, uh, than the Ducati's variant of this. So final thoughts as we get into pricing, KTM list price, $21,500, but only 700 of them in the world. Ducati, $22,995. So um, from a price advantage standpoint, the KTM is roughly about $1,500 cheaper if you can get one. Uh, the limited edition factor there does come into play. So do I think there's one that's better than the other? I think that there's probably one that in my mind um, is still going to be my favorite. I, I don't see the Desert X Rally pulling me away from my KTM. I think the KTM uh, still is probably going to be a little bit more dirt focused, probably a little bit more uh, off-road oriented. But when I'm looking at the spec sheet for the Ducati, this Desert X Rally is really kind of making some step ups over the base version. And you can't ride a spec sheet. So I won't know for sure until I throw my leg over one. Uh, I can't imagine that uh, KTM is going to give us an opportunity to ride one of the 2024 limited edition rallies. But like I said, I, I there was nothing about that bike that has me even closely remotely uh, excited about trading mine up. Um, so I would say that, you know, being able to compare mine against the 2024 Desert X rally would probably be close enough. And maybe we'll get the opportunity to do it. Until then, throw your thoughts in the comments below. I look forward to an engaging and civilized conversation on the internet of all places.